Hey everyone, it's Corey McCarthy, and welcome to a new episode. In my last Q&A, you all asked for another response video, so here you go. One week ago, Richard, aka Vegan Gains, released a video where he provided advice on the optimal number of sets and rep range for muscle growth. I will link that video in the description below for your convenience. Now, I agree with Richard on some things, on others, I feel that he needs to look a little deeper into the research. So this video is both a little bit correction as well as a little bit expansion. This is not a hate video as I consider Richard a friend. And on that note, I would like to wish him the best. He's a married man now. With that said, let's begin. Per my usual style of response, I will break this down into clips of Richard talking, followed by my response. It asked this question a lot, what's the best set and rep range for gains? And we're talking specifically about building as much muscle and strength as possible. So first of all, what's the ideal rep range? Since the amount of reps you can do is pretty much determined by how much weight you're going to lift, weight as a percentage of your one rep max is extremely important here. And as long as you're training with a weight between 60 to 90% of your one rep maximum, you're not going to see any significant changes in muscle protein synthesis, or in other words, muscle growth. What this means is five reps per set is just as good as 10 reps per set for causing muscle growth. And ultimately what matters is you're lifting above 60% of your one rep maximum and thus gains will happen. There's nothing magical about lifting in the bodybuilding rep range where it's eight to 12 or whatever the hell it is. The only exception to this rule is when drugs come into play. If you're on steroids, it doesn't matter what rep range you're lifting in, you'll just just grow muscle. And the best example of this is Kai Green with his lightweight, slow, steady movement, muscle mind connection bullshit. He's able to grow lifting lightweight sometimes because he's on steroids. There's nothing special about using really lightweight, focusing on muscle contraction. No, that's bullshit. It's just steroids. I have a couple things to say about this, but Richard will actually be covering one of them later. So I will hold off on that for now and respond to one specific item that stood out. Lightweights can indeed build muscle. In fact, in a 2015 study by renowned exercise scientists Brad Schoenfeld and Brett Contreras, it was found that the rep range of 25 to 30 builds just as much muscle as the classic 8 to 12 rep range, but strength improvements were better in the 8 to 12 rep group. Moreover, research out of Japan has shown that finishing off a muscle with a single very high rep set directly after heavier workloads produces significant improvements in muscular strength, size, and endurance than when a high rep finisher is not included. Those findings clearly demonstrate that a combination style training, such as heavier work coupled with some lighter work, is the most optimal for results. Furthermore, there are three primary understood mechanisms of hyper Atrophy, mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress. The latter, or metabolic stress, is best achieved with higher rep ranges going for a scorching pump and a solid peak contraction. Thus, higher reps with a focused contraction are one crucial element in a successful science-based lifting routine, and should not be disregarded as bullshit or only for drug users. So Kai Green isn't entirely off base. Moving along. And now what's the ideal number of sets? What you have to consider here is total volume. You'll grow about the same amount of muscle doing three sets of 10 reps as you would doing 10 sets of three reps. However, in this study, they found that the group lifting the heavier weights with more sets had better improvements to their one rep maximum bench press and squat. And this makes sense, as I've mentioned earlier, that as long as you're lifting above 60% of your one rep maximum, you'll have about the same amount of muscle protein synthesis, but lifting in a heavier rep range might make you better suited for absolute max lifts. And this is where I held off before. Richard is absolutely correct. Cumulative workload is very important. This is why 5x5 five five works so well for growth and not just strength alone. In fact, in one 2015 study on 48 men, 5x5 five five produced significantly better results than both 1x5 and 3x5, and 3x5 three five produced better results than 1x5. So yes, cumulative workload is incredibly important for muscle growth. And this is also why 7x3 and 3x10 produce similar muscular gains to each other. Cumulative workload. 
However, this is where I wish to elaborate a bit on what Richard has said. Go beyond, rather. You should still incorporate lower rep, heavier work into your programs, even if your goal is muscular growth and not pure strength. Remember how I mentioned earlier the three mechanisms of hypertrophy? Mechanical tension, muscle damage, and metabolic stress? Well, the first of those three, or mechanical tension, relies specifically on heavier weight through a full range of motion and is best suited to the big, heavy compound movements like the squat, the deadlift, bench, and overhead presses, chins, rows, etc. So just like with higher reps and lighter weight, lower reps and heavier weight still play another role in optimizing muscular growth, and should not be disregarded. And this variety of rep ranges can be best brought together using a lifting routine expressing periodization. For instance, a couple weeks of 8 to 10 rep work with another couple weeks of 4 to 6 rep work and another couple weeks of, you know, 12 to 15 rep work, perhaps with some additional drop sets beyond failure, going as high as even 50 total reps to maximize metabolic stress. And speaking of periodization, nonlinear periodization specifically produces better gains in both muscle and strength strength than linear or non-periodized programs. Alternatively, and as you all may have witnessed in my recent arm training video, which I've linked below, you can also strategically incorporate a variety of rep ranges into a single workout to satisfy a number of elements important to muscular growth in one session. Do whichever you prefer, so long as your approach is inclusive given the research. And lastly, the most important thing to consider is progressive overload. Progressive overload is what builds muscle, and you should be focusing on small increments improvements over a period of time and you can achieve progressive overload by either adding weight doing more reps with a given weight or doing more sets and you have to keep this principle in mind when choosing a set and rep range if you're going to do 10 sets of three reps like in one of the studies I just showed you and you plateau you're not getting any stronger where do you go from there are you going to add in another set when you're already doing 10 sets no, that's retarded, and you can't add any more weight either because you're already only doing three reps, so you can't really use the progressive overload principle here, and that's crucial to building muscle mass. So that's why I generally recommend training around the eight rep range with about three to four sets because here you can use the progressive overload principle very easily. You can still add weight, you can still add in sets. I totally agree. Progressive overload is a vital element to muscle growth and you can apply it to any rep range you may be working with, be it four to six, eight to 10, 12 to 15, or even 25 to 30 or higher. One example of progression could be, in your last session, you managed 12 reps of barbell curls with 100 pounds of weight. But this session, you came in and knocked out 13 reps with that 100 pounds of weight. You've progressed more reps with the same weight. And that's just one example. The point is you want to try to avoid stagnation. Finally, it's not just about the rep ranges and session volume that builds a quality routine, but also frequency and exercise selection even, as I've discussed in previous videos. However, this video is really just in response to the specifics that Richard initially discussed. And even with all of the elements in place, you cannot forget about the importance of diet and sleep if you want to continue to optimize the results from your labor. Anyhow, that's about it. I just wanted to share my thoughts and some key ideas Richard had discussed. I know he watches my channel, so perhaps he will even learn something from this video that he can apply to his own training, and hopefully you all have too, to make ethical fucking gains. So please like and share this video, spread the scientific lifting knowledge around, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button below to keep on top of the regular updates on my channel. That includes my ever-popular and fun weekly Q&A events held live right here, where people ask me all sorts of shit in real time. Also, drop some comments below and let me know what you all think. Perhaps share some of your own lifting tips or research you've come upon that's improved your own training results. If you'd like to ask me something directly, though, please head over to my blog at StrongerFasterVegan.com and drop a comment under the appropriate blog entry. I will link that below for your convenience. Also, if you're interested in my nutrition and training service specifically for vegans, Head on over to www.veganmuscleacademy.com forward slash join dash now for more info on how to sign up. Otherwise, I will see you all around next time.